Hey guys, coming at you with The Jackets by Gary Soto. My clothes have failed me. I remember the green coat that I wore in fifth and sixth grades when you either danced like a champ or pressed yourself against a greasy wall, bitter as a penny toward the happy couples. When I needed a new jacket and my mother asked what kind I wanted, I described something like biker's wear black leather and silver studs with enough belts to hold down a small town. We were in the kitchen, steam on the windows from her cooking. She listened so long while stirring dinner that I thought she understood for sure the kind I wanted. The next day when I got home from school, I discovered, draped on my bedpost, a jacket the color of day-old guacamole. I threw my books on the bed and approached the jacket slowly as if it were a stranger whose hand I had to shake. I touched the vinyl sleeve, the collar, and peeked at the mustard-colored lining. From the kitchen, Mother yelled that my jacket was in the closet. I closed the door to her voice and pulled at the rack of clothes in the closet, hoping the jacket on the bedpost wasn't for me but my mean brother. No luck. I gave up. From my bed, I stared at the jacket. I wanted to cry because it was so ugly and so big that I knew I'd have to wear it for a long time. I was a small kid thin as a young tree, and it would be years before I'd have a new one. I stared at the jacket like an enemy, thinking bad things, before I took off my old jacket, whose sleeves climbed halfway up my elbow. I put the big jacket on. I zipped it up and down several times and rolled the cuffs up so they didn't cover my hands. I put my hands in the pockets and flapped the jacket like a bird's wings. I stood in front of the mirror, full face, then profile, and then looked over my shoulder as if someone had called me. I sat on the bed, stood against the bed, and combed my hair to see what I would look like doing something natural. I looked ugly. I threw it on my brother's bed and looked at it for a long time before I slipped it on and went out to the backyard, smiling a thank you to my mom as I passed her in the kitchen. With my hands in my pockets, I kicked a ball against the fence and then climbed it, climbed it to sit looking onto the alley. I hurled orange peels at the mouth of an open garbage can, and when the peels were gone, I watched the white puffs of my breath thin to nothing. I jumped down, hands in my pockets, and in the backyard on my knees, I teased my dog Brownie by swooping my arms while making bird calls. He jumped at me and missed. He jumped again and again until a tooth sunk deep, ripping an L-shaped tear on my left sleeve. I pushed Brownie away to study the tear as I would a cut on my arm. There was no blood, only a few loose pieces of fuzz dumb dog, I thought, and pushed him away hard when he tried to bite again. I got up from my knees and went to my bedroom to sit with my jacket on my lap with the lights out. That was the first afternoon with my new jacket. The next day, I wore it to sixth grade and got a D on a math quiz. During the morning recess, Frankie T., the playground terrorist, pushed me to the ground and told me to stay there until recess was over. My best friend, Steve Negrete, ate an apple while looking at me. And the girls turned away to whisper on the monkey bars. The teachers were no help. They looked my way and talked about how foolish I looked in my new jacket. I saw their heads bob with laughter, their hands half covering their mouths. Even though it was cold, I took off the jacket during lunch and played kickball in a thin shirt, my arms feeling like braille from goosebumps. But when I returned to class, I slipped the jacket on and shivered until I was warm. I sat on my hands, heating them up, while my teeth chattered like a cup of crooked dice. Finally warm, I slid out of the jacket, but a few minutes later put it back on when the fire bell rang. We paraded out into the yard, where we, the sixth graders, walked past all the other grades to stand against the back fence. Everybody saw me. Although they didn't say it out loud, man, that's ugly. I heard the buzz buzz of gossip and even laughter that I knew was meant for me. And so I went in my guacamole colored jacket, so embarrassed, so hurt, I couldn't even do my homework. I received C's on quizzes and forgot the state capitals and the rivers of South America, our friendly neighbor. Even the girls, who had been friendly, blew away like loose flowers to follow the boys in neat jackets. I wore that thing for three years, until the sleeves grew short and my forearms stuck out like the necks of turtles. All during that time, no love came to me. No little dark girl in a Sunday dress she wore on Monday. At lunchtime, I stayed with the ugly boys, who leaned against the chain-link fence and looked around with propellers of grass spinning in our mouths. We saw girls walk by alone, saw couples hand in hand, their heads like bookends pressing air together. We saw them and spun our propellers so fast our faces were blurs. I blame that jacket for those bad years. I blame my mother for her bad taste and her cheap ways. 
It was a sad time for the heart. With a friend, I spent my sixth grade year in a tree in the alley, waiting for something good to happen to me in that jacket, which had become the ugly brother who tagged along wherever I went. And it was about that time that I began to grow. My chest puffed up with muscle and, strangely, a few more ribs. Even my hands, those fleshy hammers, showed bravely through the cuffs, the fingers already hardening for the coming fights. But that L-shaped rip on the left sleeve got bigger. Bits of stuffing coughed out from its wound after a hard day of play. I finally scotch-taped it closed. But in rain or cold weather, the tape peeled off like a scab, and more stuffing fell out until that sleeve shriveled into a palsied arm. That winter, the elbows began to crack and whole chunks of green began to fall off. I showed the cracks to my mother, who always seemed to be at the stove with steamed up glasses, and she said that there were children in Mexico who would love that jacket. I told her that this was America, and yelled that Debbie, my sister, didn't have a jacket like mine. I ran outside, ready to cry, and climbed the tree by the alley to think bad thoughts and watch my breath puff white and disappear. But whole pieces still casually flew off my jacket when I played hard, read quietly, or took vicious spelling tests at school. When it became so spotted that my brother began to call me camouflage, I flung it over the fence into the alley. Later, however, I swiped the jacket off the ground and went inside to drape it across my lap and mope. I was called to dinner. Steam silvered my mother's glasses as she said grace. My brother and sister, with their heads bowed, made ugly faces at their glasses of powdered milk. I gagged, too, but eagerly ate big rips of buttered tortilla that held scooped-up beans. Finished, I went outside with my jacket across my arm. It was a cold sky. The faces of clouds were piled up, hurting. I climbed the fence, jumping down with a grunt. I started up the alley and soon slipped into my jacket, that green ugly brother who breathed over my shoulder that day and ever since. <laughs>